self-report is any method which involves asking a participant about their feelings, attitude, beliefs, and so on. Examples of self-reports include questionnaires, interviews, and rating scales, but it's important to note that self-reports are also often used as a way of gaining participants' responses in observational studies and experiments. One type of self-report is a questionnaire, which consists of a set of questions, usually in high-structured written form. Questionnaires can contain both open and closed questions, and participants record their own answers. A strength of questionnaires is that they allow data to be collected from a large number of people quickly and cheaply. People may also be more willing to give away personal information on paper than they would face-to-face, -face, especially if the questionnaire is anonymous. Questionnaires are also reliable, because the same questionnaire can be given out again, so therefore the procedure is standardised. A possible weakness of questionnaires is that they arguably have a bias towards people who are literate and have enough time to fill them in. For example, it's possible that someone who is dyslexic may feel put off by having to read through a questionnaire and fill it out. Another potential weakness is that it's possible people might misreport their answers, either intentionally or just because they didn't read the question properly. Interviews are another type of self-report, where an interviewer records the responses of the participant. They can be either structured, where there is a predetermined set of questions, or unstructured, where no questions are decided in advance. A strength of interviews is that they are often able to study large samples of people fairly easily and quickly. They are able to examine a large number of variables, and can ask people to reveal behaviour and feelings which they have experienced in real situations. They also allow participants to describe their own experiences rather than inferring this from observing participants. With structured interviews, they can easily be repeated as there is a predetermined set of questions and therefore it is reliable and standardised. With unstructured interviews, detailed information can be gained, because the interviewer can dig deeper and ask more questions based on what the participant has already answered. Interviews can also be subject to interviewer bias or social desirability bias, because the participant may respond in a way that they think the interviewer wants them to, and therefore the data will not be completely accurate. Participants may also not respond entirely truthfully, either because they cannot remember or because they wish to present themselves in a socially acceptable manner. Social desirability bias can be a big problem with self-report measures, as participants often answer in a way to portray themselves in a good light. Questions can also often be leading, which means that the interviewers may be unwittingly forcing the respondent to give a particular reply, and the response rates of questionnaires can also be notoriously low if the questionnaire is sent out via email, and therefore it is hard to know how representative the sample is. Furthermore, a weakness of structured interviews is that you only obtain the information you have set out to obtain. With unstructured, a weakness is that you get lots of information which may not be completely relevant to what you're trying to find out. An important consideration for both interviews and questionnaires is whether to use open or closed questions, or both. Closed questions, also known as fixed choice questions, are those which provide a limited choice, for example, a participant's age. These types of questions provide quantitative data, which is very easy to measure, quantify and analyse. However, they do not allow the participant to give very in-depth insights, and they may not feel like their desired response is available. Open questions are those which invite the respondent to provide their own answers and provide qualitative data, since participants can give reasons for their answer and explain themselves. This gives the participants freedom to write what they want to gain their opinion. They can also produce more in-depth responses relating to what the participant actually thinks, rather than being restricted by categories. However, it's possible for researchers to interpret an answer in a way that wasn't intended, or differently from how other researchers may interpret it. It is also harder to compare and analyse responses from open-ended questions with others because it's not quantitative data. Another common type of self-report is a rating scale. One of the most common types of rating scale is the Likert scale, where a statement is given by the researchers and the participants decide how strongly they agree or disagree with the statements on a scale of 1 to 10. For example, the researchers could ask the participant whether they agree or disagree that mozzarella cheese is great on a scale of 1 to 10, with 1 being strongly disagree and 10 being strongly agree. One of the main strengths of a Likert scale is that they can quantify how strongly a participant feels about something, which gives more detail than a simple yes or no answer. The data is also quantitative, which makes the response easy to analyse and compare with others. Moreover, data can be collected from a very large number of people very quickly and cheaply, because the questions do not take long to complete. 
A possible weakness of Likert scales is that there can be a tendency for people to respond towards the middle of scales, perhaps to make themselves look less extreme. As with any type of self-report, participants may provide the answers that they feel they should. Also, as the participants' choices are limited, there is no in-depth information gathered and so researchers do not know why the participants have rated themselves at a particular level. There is also potentially a researcher bias because they may misinterpret the responses gathered. I hope this video has proven helpful for you. If you want more psychology videos like this, remember to leave a like and subscribe so you don't miss out. Thank you for watching!